American Survivor has been on the air for well over two decades now, and it shows no intention of stopping anytime soon. Taylor Swift! And in the new era of shortened seasons and a switch in the direction of old school game tropes, many of us US fans have turned a wandering eye overseas to see what this show called Australian Survivor is all about. And unless you're living under a rock or just don't go on social media, you've no doubt heard of the polarizing villain that is the ruthless King George Mladenov. Do I even need an introduction? I'm King George from Survivor Brains vs. Brawn. I'm coming back to take back what's rightfully mine. Comparing US Survivor to Australian Survivor is somewhat of a fool's errand. But one thing the Aussie format does impeccably well is create and promote their big characters. And no one in the franchise stands out as much as George. You told me you liked my idol so much, so I got it permanently tattooed on me. <laughs> George, nice idol. <laughs> Thank you. Nice yellow jumpsuit. Thank you. <laughs> His bombastic style and no holds barred attitude is what made me fall in love with him as an icon on my TV screen or a computer screen as it would have because it's quite the chore to watch the show in the US. This video will be done in two parts. Part one, illustrating George's introductory season in Brains v. Brawn. Part two, in the half newbie, half returnee season, Heroes v. Villains. Don't forget to subscribe or drop a like for me in the corner. I'm almost at that 1000 subscriber mark and I would love for you to be my next. King George began his survivor career in season six, Brains vs. Brawn. Due to mass COVID restrictions, Brains vs. Brawn would film in the outback instead of tropical locations like Samoa or Fiji. George was a self-proclaimed political operative placed on the Brains tribe, and right out of the gate makes his presence known that he is not afraid to show us his confidence. The only muscle that matters is the brain, and I've got the biggest and the best brain of them all. I'm a member of the Labor Party in Bankstown, and I'm basically a professional spin doctor for a living. Survivor is a lot like local politics. I've been outwitting, outplaying and outlasting. I don't want to stab people in the back. I want to get my axe and swing it right at their face and let them see it coming. I don't think I can win. I know I'm going to win. It didn't take long for him to make some enemies either. He shares his opinions willingly and openly and isn't worried if he upsets people by his blunt words. Simon, you had an opportunity yesterday to take fire back to camp. Uh, we gave it a red hot crack, that's for sure. So you didn't get fire? We didn't get fire. So no advantage. <laughs> I've spent 10 years in Bankstown Labor politics. I've known those vultures and snakes in the grass for a very long time, but I know how to handle snakes. George is known for his fierce rivalries, and very quickly in the first episode, he spots his first enemy in Dr. Mitch. Survivor history he tells me that the leader of this tribe, if it is Mitch, will be chopped down. We don't have a fire, and we're not going to eat, and we have to get to immunity challenge. So thanks, Doctor. Great start by you. I don't follow instructions for no reason. That's not how George operates. The doctor's in a very nice position. If we lose that first immunity challenge, that doctor's safe, and I don't like that. George finds a safety without power advantage that would allow him and five other tribe mates leave tribal council that night. This should be a way to gain five allies easy and form bonds that are crucial early on. He chooses to pick those perceived as weaker threats and save them from potentially being voted off. However, this doesn't quite work how he thinks it should. Rachel, Kara, Georgia, Baden, and Way are safe because of me. And the six of us will be working together, and that's powerful. George, how are you feeling this morning? I want people to understand why I did what I did. Yeah. We were going down a slope where we were just picking off the weak. That's why I saved the five weakest in the tribe. What? George, while he's talking about not pigeonholing people, he's just pigeonholed every single one of us that he saved. I think that he actually wants to run the shop and he wants it to be King George, but I'm not a monarchist in the slightest. <laughs> and thus, King George has been crowned. Australian Survivor can be quite physical and George may be a mastermind of strategy as you'll see later, but when he offers to put himself in a highly competitive reward challenge, he's met with crickets. 
brains. I'm happy to do it. You go next. He's already up. I'd just love to know what's George thinking if he's putting his hand up when we're do or die. Yeah, what's your strategy here? Yeah, I would have I beaten him out of the, um, out of the net. Mm. And then the, I, and the I, I don't know how it would have gone in the arm um, wrestle. Because yeah, he yeah. looked really strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it I definitely would have beaten him. What was your... When, when they put Gavin Wanganeen up, an AFL legend, and you put your hand up high, what, what was your str strategy there? I think I would have beaten him out of the net. Okay. And if I didn't, I would have tackled him instantly. He's found himself on the outs, and he's found himself at risk of going home as soon as his tribe loses immunity. It's in the third immunity challenge where George's brain power really starts to show his promise in the game. I've got the answer. No one's listening. Explain what you're saying. I, it's, the ring goes through vertically through the middle. Then we've got the ring on the other side. We need to move the ring, not the boxes. I had the answer. Can I do it, please? George pleading with his tribe. He thinks he has the answer. I think George might be onto it. Someone get out. Down, down, down. Ring up. Ring up. Is that going to work? Oh, my God, that was it. And that's it. Oh, no. ring. Stick it in the wall. Get out. Rains. Win immunity. People are starting to take note that he's a big player. Thankfully, he's able to find a loyal ride or die in the empathetic Kara. After observing future ally Baden find a clue to the immunity idol, he beats him to the punch. Oh, thank you, Macedonian Jesus. You found a hidden immunity idol. There you are. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. my God, you were so right. That is amazing. Baden is still looking for the idol. But he doesn't know that I've already got it. When brains eventually lose immunity, George puts everybody on the back foot when he wears his idol around his neck at camp. The alliance led by Joey quickly pivot to get out Dr. Mitch, and George lives another day. It's bizarre how George takes this move against Mitch, given their initial interactions. I think he was more upset he played his idol when he didn't have to. Last night's tribal council, I played my idol, and I didn't need to do that. What a stupid move to get rid of Mitch. Rachel made promises to people and she's broken them. I definitely don't trust Rachel after last night. Rachel, last night was playing in the gutter. In your oh. opinion? Well, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. Is it because there was lying involved? Yes, extreme lying involved. Isn't that the game we're playing? No, it's not. George and Kara are still on the bottom of the tribe, but hope is granted when Kara finds her own hidden immunity idol. As long as George, Kara, Baden, and Wei all vote the same way and use it correctly, they could be out of this mess yet. But then think again because Wei is not willing to play ball despite him saving her at the first tribal council, and this was a massive betrayal. Kara makes the selfless move of saving George over herself, and she is voted off. I didn't ask to be saved. You can't do one thing and just expect that someone's going to be loyal to you for the rest of their time here. I really wanted to keep it as a souvenir for my kids. <laughs> like, really. But I'd be silly not to. So I'd like to play that, please. All right, who are you playing it for? For George. For George? Oh, what? This is a hidden immunity idol, and any votes cast for George will not count. I'll read the votes. Why did you do that? It's good. It's good. First vote. Georgia. We're tied. Three votes, Kara. Three votes, Georgia. All right. That means we're going to re-vote. George, come get the urn. I said yesterday that there are heroes and villains on this tribe. And Kara is the biggest hero. Sixth person voted out. Kara. You're a hero, Kara. <laughs> but the survivor gods have smiled upon the Duchess of Double Bay, and it's a classic Australian survivor non elimination episode, and she is taken to the Braun tribe, much to George's delight. Oh my god, Kara! I'm so happy to see you. 
I'm sure I'm the only one happy to see you too. <laughs> We're happy here. Yeah. Maybe you actually heard what happens on this tribe now. It sounds horrible. Thanks to Kara and her relationship building, when the tribe swap comes around the corner, they are absorbed into a majority alliance, changing his status from on the bottom to the top. If you want to be a part of our... We are. I would love to help you. You know, I think the riskiest play here would be not playing with a player like George. Because if you have George on the other side, I think he's going to create absolute chaos. In my mind, I was going, yes, yes. But I had to contain myself. His old brains tribe mates that once wanted him out are now on the chopping block. And thanks to some smart split vote thinking by George, even if the minority play an idol, they should all be safe. This plan soon goes awry when his trusted confidant Kara stitches up the vote, sending Big D home. I think I used that correctly. I'm gonna play this for Rachel. Huh? Just watch. <laughs> Why are you always stressing? Laura. It's one vote, Laura. Two votes, Georgia. I think I've got this. They voted Laura. They voted Did you vote Laura? Maybe. Did you vote for Laura? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes, I think they did. No, that is why. This mistake doesn't inspire loyalty to their alliance, but nonetheless are able to stay afloat. In episode 12, the Brains Tribe win immunity and Kara finds an advantage that allows her and one person to attend the opposing tribe's tribal council and George and Kara are included in the vote off of Simon, a player with two immunity idols betrayed by his allies. Oh, Deary me, two idols. That was big. That How dumb can you be, Baden? <laughs> This will become important later in part two of my video, so just file it away for now. The tribes merge and George is able to put himself in the middle as a double agent, feeding information to the old brains headed by Haley while keeping his post-swap alliance at bay. With Haley's idol burning a hole in her pocket, George tells her to correctly play her idol for Laura and pin the vote on Kez, who just found an idol earlier that day. And just like that, sent an original Braun member home and eliminated two idols in play. Kez starts screaming, I have an idol! And I'm going, oh, God, I can't believe this. I don't want Kez having an idol. Again. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tricky situation for me. Haley, with the idol in her back pocket, is relying on me, leaking to the brains, who the target of the Brawn Alliance is. The right target is Kez. Kez found a hidden immunity idol. You guys are voting for Kez, but you guys need to pitch Danny. Vote for Kez. Yep. Okay. Play the idol to Laura. That's okay. all I'll say. Okay. Run, run, Start run, 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 run. At least you would think Kez's idol would be dead until she hands it over to Flick before leaving, creating backlash from the fans, and production thankfully corrected this in future seasons. But it's honestly ridiculous this was allowed. By playing the mole, George is playing with fire. After last night's tribal council, one thing's very clear. King George of the Fire Tribe has arrived. That was my coronation moment. It went off perfectly. When Haley feels the heat as the next target, she throws him under the bus and breaks his cover to the opposing alliance, hoping he will be the next one to go. But thanks to George's deny, deny, deny policy and some rather political answers, she is voted out and sent to Redemption Rock without George directly saying he was ever the mole. Haley basically said that either you or Kara were leaking information to Baden. Of course I'm the leak, but I'm just going to deny it. That's a lesson you learn in politics. Deflect blame. I'm going to make sure that I deflect it back onto Haley. George and Kara have been working on both sides. George, what would you say to that? I think I'll revert to what I said before. There are times when people He's buckle under right pressure. Here, and I don't buckle under pressure. Then I think you should tell the truth, man, and either tell her that she's lying or tell her that you did give her some information. I think what's important is who are you loyal to in the game. Uh -huh. Of course. Politician. And everybody knows who I'm loyal to. 
Haley, the tribe has spoken. After Haley returns to the game, the Braun begin to turn on each other, and George develops a plan while Emmett and Danny are vying for power to get the Brain's remnants to vote out Gerald with Flick burning her Kez idol for Emmett when it is unnecessary. It was really compelling gameplay and shows how well and impressive he can be working under pressure. This is music to my ears. The Braun are eating each other. Emmett is voting for Danny. Danny is voting for Emmett. I'm going to use that to my advantage. This can change the game. I thrive in this kind of environment because when people are split, when people are divided, that's when I can come up through the middle and conquer. Gerald. We're tied. Three votes, Gerald. Three votes, Danny. Charged up. George's luck continues as he finds the secret hidden immunity idol, allowing him to save himself or an ally in secret without having to play it publicly, which he uses to save his best friend Kara while pretending it was her who used it all along. Many call George the cockroach of Bankstown because he couldn't be killed, but the reality is he was so resilient because he was doing more than everyone. He was never afraid to incorporate espionage into his plans and learned valuable information many times from eavesdropping. George might feel good to yes. get rid of him. But Long time it might not, be good. might not be. Once George is gone, it might just mean we come back tomorrow and we're in the minority. <gasps> that's the only trouble with that plan. And that's why, like tonight, but if there's an opportunity to take out a brawn, I think I, there's a big part of them might regret not saying to Rip Emmett. And we trust that George and I work with us and they stick with us. I think but I'm going to go with my gut. We have to take out George. Although George has played a great strategic game, he has burned and angered many people along the way. Kara finds another hidden immunity idol, and when she feels some heat, she plays it unnecessarily. And this doesn't bode well for George, considering they didn't tell Haley or Way in their alliance about this. Kara playing the idol. That was so dumb. Oh my god. It was the dumbest play ever. <laughs> At last night's tribal council, the alliance with Haley, Way, myself, and Kara voted as a solid block, and then two things went wrong. The first one is that the urn saved Flick, but I wanted her gone. And the second one was that Kara blew up her hidden immunity idol for absolutely no reason. Trust is the only thing that matters in an alliance. And at the end of the day, Kara and I didn't tell Haley and Way about that idol. Haley starts to think of George as being a viable option to take to the end. Meanwhile, his vote is crucial every tribal council in the late game. Vote after vote, he is able to stay alive until Flick finds an idol, he comes up with his fifth or sixth master plan, rallies to vote out way, and it works. We're getting to the pointy end of the game now. The gloves are off now, and the remaining players in the game are not willing to keep a power couple like George and Kara together any longer, and one of them must go. George is seen as the biggest strategic threat left in the game, and they are absolutely right. It's here when George and Kara will finally go against each other. She takes out the immunity, guaranteeing herself a spot in the final three. Tonight, it's going to be the end of the reign of either King George, Queen Haley, or the Duchess of Double Bay, Kara. Needs to happen. Like if we don't take action now, he was literally going to run all the way to the end. That's it. The only way I can save myself is to convince George and Kara to crack open and vote for each other, so they don't vote for me. She's yep. my queen. I fear that either the king or the queen's going home tonight. I'm the only person in this game left that has won three individual immunity challenges. So I want George to know he needs me here at the final three to win that challenge and take him to the final two. I didn't come to the Olympics to win bronze. I came to win gold. So I I think it is essential that we both vote Kara tonight. At the end of the day, Kara has been my closest friend and ally in the game. Do I really have it in me to vote her out tonight? 21st person voted out of Australian Survivor Brains versus Braun and eighth member of our jury, Kara. Kara is voted out and George is officially the cockroach of Bankstown. Haley's decision to keep George over Kara is based off the way George has made the jury feel. 
She feels George is a possible Russell Hance character, and she will be able to receive the majority of the votes up for grab at the end. And her strategy is only cemented when Flick is voted out of the game by herself. I think that Flick has more locked in votes with that jury. And based on that, you have to navigate a very thin line to get to the crown. 22nd person voted out, the ninth and final member of our jury. Flick. Then there were two. This is quite possibly the best final two in all of the Survivor franchise. Queen Haley excels in big moves and creating bonds that will stick with her castmates forever. Being a pain researcher, she definitely had a leg up in the final challenge, which is seen by most as a torture device meant to test players' endurance through hell. No one can doubt her resilience. And what about King George? He formed alliances and orchestrated moves left and right that allowed him to scrape his way to the end, outsmarting everyone. Most would say they wanted George gone since the beginning, and he always had an outstanding target on his back, yet somehow was able to defy everyone's expectations and get to final tribal council. I've had a plan since day one, and it's to be a smooth political operative running a well-oiled campaign. And more importantly, I've always been one step ahead of the opposition, but I didn't get lucky. I worked hard to pull myself from the bottom and shake the target off my back every single day. In terms of opening statements, George lays out how he had to overcome personal barriers and cause chaos to thrive and get himself farther every day. He highlighted how he turned on the Braun tribe to make his minority brain stride the alliance to be feared in the end. Phase one was controlled dysfunction. It was controlled chaos. I became an honorary Braun and that set me up for the final phase of my game. My best prospects of success was going back to the brains. In working with the brains, I carried a minority to a majority. I took opportunities to strike. You were all a threat. A man with a plan is dangerous, and I've been very dangerous in this game. I know I'm not gonna win Miss Congeniality, but I've given it my damn all to outwit, outplay, and outlast 22 players. During Haley's pitch, she showed how often she was in the swing position that allowed her to create big moves in the game. Beating a world-class cyclist at Redemption Rock and her immunity wins was very respected by the jury. I always knew what the Minority Alliance was doing, and I had the power to swing any of those votes. When it came to the vote for George, I made a decision that I wanted to swing and take out Joey. I ended up at Redemption Rock. That was a really crucial turning point for me. I was up against Baden, a Tour de France winner, and winning that Redemption Rock challenge gave me the confidence to really test myself physically. I'm really proud of the way that I've managed to play a physical game. And then out come the jury questions. George uses Laura's question to illustrate how hard he worked to get information and how sneaky he could be to outwit everyone. Haley uses some harsh jury questions to say she was not afraid to lie and manipulate her way to the end. Being a super fan, she's proud of it and owns it. A lot of the jury did not like George's way of beating around the bush or answering in a political fashion and definitely did not appreciate George's performance aspect and challenges. George, when it comes to challenges, you decided not to play a big part of the game, the outplay. George, you've burnt bridges with everyone. If you had the chance to do this again, would you play the game the same and still be spinning lies and destroying relationships with everyone in the game? The difficult thing about Survivor is that fine line between strategy and what's interpreted as lying. I feel like you're beating around the bush of what I'm actually trying to ask. I'm proud of my resume. And I don't like know how else to say it, man. Watching AU Survivor for years now, I've definitely felt that a large portion of the populace appreciates physical challenge performance, and that was definitely a weakness in George's game in regards to public sentiment. George, taking a break. We know that he does not like heights. It's too far. It's too far out. I oh, just give up. We have two amazing finalists, and only one can be sole survivor. 
Both back their games unconditionally, and in the end, by a vote of 7-2, to two, the winner is... Winner of Australian Survivor, Brains vs. Braun, Haley. <laughs> Haley Leak reigns supreme by stealing the crown from George Mladenov. This decision is a hot topic to this day. They both deserve the win in my eyes, and I love them both as characters in such a fun season. Haley may have got the W, but George will go on to become the greatest villain Australian Survivor has ever seen, and the one I will remember first when I think of the Aussie counterpart to America's Survivor. We've seen King George face insurmountable odds tribal council after tribal council, save allies, rip hearts out. All we need is a returning season to see the true potential this character can portray. It's a good thing this is only part one in a part two series. Next time, we will truly see. Is George just the cockroach of Bankstown? Or is he survivor royalty as King George, the greatest player Australian survivor has ever seen? Stay tuned for my next video on the man, and I can't wait to see some of these characters again in my favorite season, Heroes v Villains. If you enjoyed this content and learned a little something new about Australian Survivor, give me a like or a subscribe for the sake of Macedonian Jesus. Taylor,